Hey y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. It's a beautiful day here on the farm, but I want to thank everybody for stopping by. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and smash that like button if you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So if you guys want to help me out, I would appreciate it. So I hope everybody's having a great day. But today I'm going to go ahead and start talking to you guys about IPM or Integrated Pest Management in high tunnel strawberries. IPM is a big portion of specialty crop farms, uh, fruit farms, vegetable farms, whatever you're using. And the reason you wanna, you know, monitor your pest is first of all, to save money on chemical. So a lot of times, you know, us as farmers, we see a problem and we think we need to spray. But if the population of the insect or the disease isn't quite there, you wanna save your money, not spraying until the population actually increases. Or if the insects are actually you know above that uh, minimum threshold and trying to affect your crop so we use IPM on our farm a lot in the orchard and whatnot but here in the high tunnel since it's my first year ever growing high tunnel strawberries I talked to um, uh, Dr. Clemens from Lincoln University we're actually collaborating with them on the project in here in this high tunnel and he's been helping me out with a lot of the IPM stuff for the strawberries and as you see here we are monitoring the insects in this high tunnel full of strawberries and our biggest two insects that we are worried about of course are spider mites and aphids and we set up these sticky traps back here so that the uh you know if there's not any aphids flying around or anything like that we go ahead and catch them like that and then of course for the spider mites these traps don't really work there's not really you know really good traps to use for the spider mites just because they like to stay underneath the leaves of the plants and you know you got to monitor them with the little uh, microscope and see how, how how great the activity is underneath the leaves so whenever using ipm on any crop it doesn't really matter what crop you're using there's a minimum threshold on on different diseases and insects so whenever you are monitoring for those insects or disease pressures you got to look at the charts and see well, hey what is the minimum amount of insects that can potentially damage my crop and what do i got to do for that so the best guy that we use is called the midwest fruit spray guy that's what we use there is a free pdf online if i find it i'm gonna go ahead and link that down in the description box below of this video so it just includes all the different fruit crops and berries and that is the bible of fruit production that's what the specialists call it and that's what, that's our, our main uh, go-to whenever we have an insect pressure and disease and that's why it's very good to know you know your insects and your disease and you know to know what the symptoms are and if you do have any pressure to know how to treat it so like i mentioned in my other videos for these plants i am the doctor so whenever you feel sick so whenever you you know you, you have a stomach ache or whatever and don't know what it is you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes you a medicine and then you get to feeling better same thing with these plants you know us as farmers we gotta we gotta know a lot of things so, you know, for every crop, different diseases, different symptoms. So in here, you know, the first sign I see whenever I see the uh, spider mites is the leaves start turning a little brown on top. Hey, I have spider mite issues. And, you know, you got to always see a monitor for those. And then we go to the Midwest fruit spray guide, see what we have to do to get it figured out to go ahead and treat the strawberries so that we could have a nice, healthy crop. And the thing about IPM, it's there to you know minimize the amount of chemical or spray or whatever you're using on the crop just for an economic standpoint and for a more of a sustainability standpoint and you know the biggest misconception being you know us as farmers we're out here dumping chemicals on our crop a lot of people don't realize those chemicals are quite expensive i mean we spend you know thousands of dollars tens of thousands of dollars a year on you know the stuff we do buy and if i don't need to spray something i'm not going to this thing is like i'm here to stay so why should i do something to my crops or to my fields that could potentially harm them and i won't have a better crop in the future so that's why we incorporate ipm on our farm just so we can monitor and see hey what's going on what's 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 the disease pressure what's the insect issue so that we go ahead and figure it out so we go ahead and, and spray for the certain product uh, for the certain problem and you know there's certain products you, you could use and the nice thing about the midwest uh, fruit spray guide it's a list full of you know different classes and different grades of chemicals and of course you got your more expensive ones your more um, uh your, your cheaper ones so it just depends what what issue you have and how great your disease pressure is inside your tunnel so like i said we did collaborate with lincoln university on this project in the high tunnel here to monitor and these sticky traps here they'll be good for all of next season as well so uh, i'm gonna we set them up in here this winter and i mean they'll be good through spring 
and like I said, you know, we, we use these to monitor and if there's like one or two, you know, insect issues, we're not going to really do something about it. Of course, we got to look at the chart and see, hey, what's the uh, minimum threshold or the economic threshold to see if the insect is actually going to affect your crop. And I know for other, you know, secondary pests and stuff, you know, if you find them, it's not a big deal. But something like spider mites in a high tunnel or aphids, you know, it could really destroy your whole entire crop. So that's why it's really good to monitor and stay on top of things just so that you can know what's going on in here so this is a sticky trap right here it's one of them right here so you can see the other insects that's been on here so this just catch catches the insects that fly around and these are mainly for flying insects like i said and uh you come through here once a week inspect them and this time of year during the winter months there's not much you know many insects flying around and stuff i mean other than the aphids and the spider mites you know but come spring whenever there is going to be a lot of insects flying around and a lot of things going you know starting to come out of uh coming out of the winter towards spring that's when you're going to see a lot more insect uh and disease pressure in the high tunnel and the thing about a high tunnel it is a degree uh a zone uh warmer than your outside so outside here in southwest missouri we are in zone 6b in the high tunnel we're probably zone 7a or 7b so you know that's why you really got to monitor for the pest because outside in the field we may never have you know aphids or spider mites on the strawberries but in here i mean we've already seen them that's that's the thing because it's, it's a lot warmer and the insects and the disease thrive in these conditions so that's why it's really good to monitor and see what's up in you know to know what's going on because you know obviously everybody wants to see know what's going on with their crops and of course we're just trying to get the most production out of these plants as possible and if you don't have a pretty product it's gonna be really hard to sell it and market that product so our goal as a farmer my goal as a farmer is to try to produce the safest best most beautiful product out there on the market so that whenever a customer takes a bite of my product they're gonna really enjoy it and then they will you know trust me as your farmer to go ahead and keep on growing their fruits so a lot of times the way you set up these traps is either by in a high tunnel it's either by the square foot basis or out in the field if you're using pheromone traps or anything like that it is on a uh, acre basis i know for like cotton and moss you want to use two or three per acre but in the high tunnel here dr clemens told me that hey you got to put eight traps in here so i went ahead and did that so I, on here i just put two on this row one on this row two one and two so there's eight in total here so then that just gives us a good a good um projection and, and a good way to monitor for those disease and pests but on a second i want to go ahead and show you guys these chandlers in the high tunnel here look how amazing these are growing i mean just look at that beautiful 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 so this is one of the key indicators of spider mites and i've already treated these with you know a miticide so all these uh there shouldn't be any more spider mites on here but that bronzing of the leaves here that's a clear indication so that's why it's very good to know what the what the symptoms are of the pressure of the pest and to know how to treat it and a lot of times that's why it's really good to uh, have good contacts with the specialists from the uh, universities and from the extensions just so that you know if you don't know the disease issue or the disease pressure then they're like hey do this 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 and then you'll figure it out so you know that's why it's really good and that's why i just keep on progressing and learning and that's why i go to so many conferences and workshops just so that i could always learn something and progress and like i mentioned in, our, in my other videos you know we went to strawberry workshops you know two years ago and whenever we first started growing strawberries then now we're starting to apply them and start starting to figure out hey it's really good to uh to know something in your in the back of your mind and then whenever you start growing the crops then you can go ahead and uh know what the issue looks like know what the disease looks like and go ahead and treat it all righty so this is going to be pretty much it for today like I said, we are uh, working on this project. So it's a current working project. And of course, I'm going to take you guys along for the ride. And if there's any other disease issues or insect pressures, of course, I'm going to keep you guys notified. So you guys make sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys can be notified whenever I do upload a video. But this is going to be pretty much it for today. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and smash that like button. If you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget, we're trying to hit 10K by the end of this year. So if you guys want to help me out, I would appreciate it. I want to say thanks for watching up to this point. You guys have a good day, and we will see you next time.